matter how hard I tried, no matter how good I was, they were still gonna find a way to destroy me. Still alive, haven't been devoured yet by the Montecito disease. This episode starts off with <laughs> what I'm going to call a paparazzi skit. It was an act, it wasn't real. Do we have that path on the scooter again? Yes, ma'am. Oh, we do, really? Same guy? Same guy. No matter how many times you tell us, Megan, no matter how many imaginary paparazzos you see on a non-existent scooter or in a basement. The guys in the basement of the building, too, as we were doing that walk, they were reporting, too, just so you're aware. We're not gonna fall for it. I mean, if they were really there, don't you think the camera crew would have jumped on it? This reminds me of the trailer where they used misleading footage from the Harry Potter premiere and Katie Price going to court and other people and events that had nothing to do with Meghan and Harry. And you know what, you can forgive Harry for his shoddy acting performance with the shifty eyes and the turning around. But Meghan, it's your craft. You're meant to be an actress, a Hollywood actress. And yet you consistently deliver being friends in this feminine. Yeah. Poop. No wonder you have 16 bathrooms in your mansion. Then we finally hear from Doria, the ever elusive silent mother that Megan just pulls out just to remind the world whenever it's convenient for her that she's half black. What's interesting is you see her in this clip and I swear to God, she looks like she's memorizing her lines and rehearsing and just making sure that she knows exactly what to say. And you can bet your bottom dollar, it's probably exactly what her daughter dictated for her to say, lest she get cut off as well. Buddy, what are you doing? My cat's here trying to monitor my performance. Doria's response to Megan telling her that she's dating Prince Harry. Oh my God gives away that entire preposterous notion that because I'm from the States, you don't grow up with the same understanding of, of the royal family. And while I now understand very clearly, there's a, a global interest there. All that bull right out the window. If it wasn't a big deal, then why would her mom react that way? She could have also been like, who? Prince Harry? Is he kind? If you don't know anything about Meghan Markle, then you would think that she lived through a nightmare, the same kind of nightmare that Catherine lived through. I would say Diana as well, but Diana, there have been a lot of people, including Tom Bauer and Lady C who actually knew Diana. They both state that Diana courted the media. She secretly telephoned them. She told them where to find her. She also loved the attention. And if I'm not mistaken, she suffered from borderline personality disorder. So that could have explained a lot of her behavior. Now there is no evidence whatsoever of Catherine orchestrating any, you know, pap strolls or telling them where to find her. They seriously hounded that poor girl. And from a very young age, did anyone protect her? No. Did Prince William release a statement? No. Did Catherine bait the media? No. Whereas you can tick all three of those points off as yes, when it applies to Meghan Markle. Organized pap strolls, she's the queen of organizing pap strolls. She did it before she even met Prince Harry and she did it in the UK. And the UK media had her pinned, is that how you say it? From the get go. There was this pap stroll where she was wearing an initials necklace, H and M, another one of her baiting attempts, where she spoke to the paparazzi as she was buying flowers. And then Harry tells her not to talk to them because the UK is saying that she's really enjoying the attention. Well, they weren't wrong. When they were in the UK, how many times have we seen Meghan and Harry getting hounded, especially after they got married? The only paparazzi shots we have of her are the ones where they are this close to her, crisp, clear shots, and considering the photos are always taken by bad grid, clearly arranged. So it really, again, leaves this icky feeling when you hear her say how traumatizing this all was. When we know, again, thanks to Tom Bauer's book, that she pushed for the relationship to be announced. This woman dated Harry for a number of months and no one cared. No one picked it up. Despite her Instagram subliminal messages, despite her constant baiting. And so according to Tom Bauer, she pushed for the relationship to be announced because she's wanted to be famous for her entire life. When I am rich and famous, when I write my life story, <laughs> says the 11 year old. I mean, look, 
I'm not gonna pretend that's a bad thing to say. Kids have their dreams and ambitions and some of them actually end up accomplishing them. The means by which you accomplish them, however, is very important to take into account. Stomping all over people because you don't have any talent or intellect to get you through on your own merit is entirely a different story and certainly nothing to be proud of. There is this recurring theme coming up in the docuseries so far that she sacrificed everything to be with Harry. And of course, we heard that in the engagement interview as well. What did you sacrifice? Your career was coming to an end. Hollywood is ageist and Meghan Markle was out of jobs. She couldn't get jobs outside of suits. She had two roles in this Hallmark show that were so cringe. You just can't help but feel secondhand embarrassment for her as you watch them, which I did back in 2018 when I liked her, by the way. They talk a lot about philanthropy here. What philanthropy? The only record of her being philanthropic was in 2016, probably when she decided that she wanted to bait Prince Harry. Outside of those couple of trips to Africa and that one trip to India, which was cut short apparently, we have never seen Meghan back in any of those locations or performing any kind of philanthropic work as soon as she landed Prince Harry. And if you guys are gonna start telling me that $25 Starbucks gift cards count as philanthropy from multi-millionaires if not billionaires, I don't know what to say to you. You hear her complaining about how there was so much intrusion, her face was everywhere, her name was everywhere, as if that wasn't her life ambition. In fact, don't hear it from me, I'll read it out to you straight from her. I work long hours, I travel for press, my mind memorizes, my mind spins, my days blur, my nights are restless, my hair is primped, my face is painted, my name is recognized, my star meter is rising. My life is changing. Now, Meghan has confessed before on her Archetypes podcast that before dating Prince Harry, she was never subjected to racism because that's just not how people saw her. Obviously now people are very aware of my race because they made it such an issue when I went to the UK. And here's the funny thing. I did not know she was biracial. Once I found out, I would send her out for black roles. And the casting would be like, what do you mean? The majority of the UK adored her. You can never be 100% loved or liked even. But try telling that to Meghan Markle because when you really look at all of the evidence, it is clear that her one and only gripe is that she wanted a 100% approval rating. Anything less is unacceptable to her and is deemed as racist or hate. They keep going back to that same article, the straight out of Compton one. Tabloids are disgusting for the most part. I don't like tabloids, I don't read the shit. Unlike Meghan Markle, by the way. When the attention was positive at the beginning, Meghan herself says that, oh wow, this is easier than I thought. So it didn't bother her that the tabloids wrote about her. It didn't bother her that her face was everywhere. It didn't bother her that her name was everywhere. At one point, Harry says this bizarre thing about his kids. They turn to me and say, what did you do in this moment? I want to be able to give them an answer. An answer to what? That your wife was beloved and embraced and welcomed by not just the monarchy, but an entire nation? So people are very excited that she's going to bring this fresh sparkle, if you like. I can't tell you how excited we are. The whole world is. It seems that racism and prejudice doesn't really apply to Meghan Markle. Medieval times, dinner and tournament. It was like that. Pleasure to meet you, your majesty. And just get a look at Harry's face. And I think it's moments like these that Meghan thinks about when she says, you know, it's not really the way I would have told the story. But she's mocking the monarchy. She's mocking British tradition and customs. And she's mocking the queen. I'm starting to question if she was sober at this point because that was over the top, even for her. Oh wait, no, no. <laughs> How can I forget this wonderful royal moment? Oh, and of course, how can I forget the soap ad? Even though Tom Bauer exposed her by talking to Thomas Markle himself, who gave her the idea of writing letters, and more importantly, who set up the entire Nickelodeon thing to make it look like Meghan was the star of the show and actually led to some change, when even he admitted he lied. He lied to his daughter, but he wanted to make her feel that her voice had an impact. 
act, especially at such a young age. I don't know if he ever came clean and told her the truth and she's just perpetuating a lie, but if we've heard about the truth, being that it wasn't just Megan, many people all over the country wrote in to, I believe it was Procter & Gamble, I'm not sure, to change the ad. And so they did. But Megan will still have you believe defiantly true to form that a letter from a 12 year old girl caused a humongous company to change its ad. I mean, that's just as believable as Harry scrolling through and falling in love when he saw her with that Snapchat dog filter. The clip from the UN speech that she made back in 2015 was also played out at length without telling you the rest of the story, which is that that speech led to her demise because it showed all of the higher ups at the UN that this woman was really only interested in promoting herself. And these are not my words, this is Tom Bauer and his research. She wanted to be Emma Watson. And guess what? Emma Watson was a UN Women Ambassador and a World Vision Ambassador. What a happy coincidence then that Meghan Markle ended up becoming a part of, you guessed it, UN Women and World Vision. Short-lived as that entire stint was because it was never an authentic, organic, you know, to use woke speech, desire for her to become an ambassador, to truly help women. I mean, what kind of a bully who targets women wants to help them? I mean, have you forgotten her One Young World speech from a few months ago? In case you're wondering what happened to the whole UN thing, after she was basically declined being made an ambassador because of her self-serving nature, she threw a hissy fit and quit. And she dropped World Vision when they no longer served her needs because she had the prince in the bag. Get ready for a word salad of the day, equity. For us, what's deeply important is this idea of equity, be it racial equity, gender equity, in this sense, vaccine equity. Where was the equity in your treatment of palace staff, Megan? Wait, 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 hold up, hold up. I'm getting ahead of myself. Where was the equity in your treatment of your own flesh and blood? This woman is going out there parading herself with a brigade of cameras, by the way. None of this is done behind the scenes. It's all for show. And she has the audacity to talk about equity while she treats everyone who doesn't serve her needs or who doesn't agree with her as she would the dirt under her shoe. And the worst part is some people, basically the elites, are actually buying it. They're inviting her in. I don't know if it's ignorance or if they just haven't done their research, you know, like, Carrie Kennedy. Do you not know what this woman is actually about? There is the argument that they do know, they just don't care because Meghan and Harry, whether you like them or not, are attention seekers and attention grabbers. So for example, a lot of people hadn't ever heard of the Ripple Hope Awards before they were awarded with this ridiculous anti-racism human rights award. I personally had never heard of the NAACP award either. So whatever they're getting attached to, that organization benefits from it by getting attention. And I believe that's the only reason these elites and organizations still have anything to do with Meghan and Harry. It's crazy how the rich and famous can do absolutely nothing, the bare minimum, and they get fantastical headlines of how they will change the world. While there are people out there, honest, hardworking people, actually changing the world, completely going unnoticed, with no acknowledgement whatsoever. Then they wrap up the episode by tying in Megan's claims of racism with Brexit. I am not going to deny that racism is real. In the UK, in Australia, I've experienced it in Australia, in the US, in Canada, anywhere in the world, in Europe, it is real. It is disgusting. It is abhorrent. It should be stopped. It should be criminalized. Wait, no, maybe it shouldn't because then people like Meghan Markle would take advantage of it and probably lead to thousands of miscarriages of justice. I mean, Pierce Morgan would be behind bars. But I see this as such a reach. I haven't seen them come up with this connection before. What does Brexit have anything to do with Meghan Markle? It's not like Brexit created racism. Racism was always there. And I struggle to see how Meghan herself in her elite royal perch, you know, where the rest of us couldn't even see her. Don't forget, if you see her out walking her dog, do not approach and do not talk to her. So much for equity. <laughs> oh my God, I hate it when there's random hairs. LA in particular, I mean, America as well, but LA in particular makes the UK pale in comparison when it comes to racism. I have heard Americans say that time and time again. And so it's funny how this LA, you know, born and bred, didn't experience any racism whatsoever her entire life, short of the experiences she witnessed her mother go through. I mean, people even questioned, 
if she was her mother's daughter, according to her. I just remember my mom telling me stories about taking me to the grocery store and women going, whose child is that? She's contradicting herself. So on one hand, you look so white that people couldn't even believe Doria was your mother. But on the other hand, you come to the UK and it's not her first time coming to the UK. She used to love the UK. I mean, we all know why, you know, manhunt. But regardless of her reasons, she came back time and time again, way before she met Harry, and she loved it. Did she not experience racism then when she was walking down the streets, when she was being served at a restaurant? People were not waiting for her to be engaged to a prince in order for the racist clause to come out. And that's why the story doesn't add up. How do you go through your entire life not experiencing racism, and then suddenly the entire world is racist against you? What really gets me is that they think we are stupid enough to fall for it. And some people are, I mean, the Sussex squad, hello. But they're just a pack of rabid animals, so I mean, they can't help themselves. Oh, I can just tell it's only gonna get worse from here. Oh, and uh, before I sign out, did you guys know that Archetypes actually won the People's Choice Award? If you're new, I made a video about this just over a month ago, maybe a month and a half when the nomination was announced, and I did say it was rigged. Or she does have a rabid fan base, so they probably all just made a thousand accounts each and just voted for her because it doesn't make sense. The podcast flopped. Critics slated it. People hated it. It's just a continuation of the senseless award train that these two are on. First we had Time Magazine, then we had NAACP, and then the Ripple of Hope Awards, which awarded a man who used to dress up as a Nazi for standing up to racism. And now a flopped podcast full of lies, victimhood, and trash talking. This is what the world has come to. I'm out.